What's up guys, Nightum here and welcome back to another weekly Mythic Plus Affix Guide. I hope that this week has treated you well. We have now only got two weeks until the new season and the new raid release. That's seriously exciting. So this week isn't the best week, especially if you're a, a tank and a healer. It mainly relies on you, but it's still uh, quite doable to get your final achievements in this week. So really start pushing for them because you can do them. So this week we have got Fortified, Sanguine, Grievous and of course Infested. So the first one that we've obviously got is Fortified. I'll quickly go over what that is, but obviously that's the most simple of them. So let's just have a quick look. Fortified. Non-bosses have more health and deal 30% more damage. So you're going to be a bit more careful with the uh, with the trash pulls this week. Obviously Fortified is going to hurt you a lot more when pulling trash and it's going to have a lot more health. So don't be afraid to use any kind of cooldowns for, for Fortified because they will be worth it. The bosses aren't going to take as long and they're not going to do as much damage. So feel free to absolutely burst down a huge trash pack to try to save you some time during the during the dungeons. The other thing that's really important to think about when doing Fortified is getting the correct stuns, not overlapping stuns, getting the correct interrupts. If, if an ability is not really doing much, then, then don't worry about it. Get the, get the painful interrupts, okay? So there isn't much to say about Fortified, but our next one that's coming in at plus 3 is Sanguine. And this one can be a bit of a pain, especially in dungeons like Toldegor or Waycrest Manor, where there are really, really close spaces. So watch out for those, and let's get into what this affix actually does. Sanguine. Shortly after death, non-boss enemies will leave a pool of blood on the ground which grows to a 5 yard radius over 2 seconds. This pool heals enemies and damages players for a percentage of their maximum health. The pool's radius is 8 yards. So basically, when anything dies that isn't a boss, it's going to leave a little pool of blood. It's very easy to see. I should, You should be able to see it just here. So what you're going to want to do is when adds are getting to low health, the tank is going to want to try to kite them away slowly. Don't do it too fast. Don't do it too slow. Otherwise, they'll heal. Just a nice, easy pace. You don't need to rush it. The best thing that you want to do is try to lead them to a an open space. Anywhere where it's a closed corridor that you're going to need to run through is going to be a bad place to drop it. You're just going to take unnecessary damage and may heal further mobs if you need to kite them back as well. So this week does heavily rely on the tank to actually move the mobs, but you can actually help as well. You can use Typhoon to push them back. If you're a DPS DK, you still have Grip to take them out. Uh, Elemental Shames can knock them back. Anything that is going to help would be great. Interrupting mobs as well that are stood in Sanguine, that will make them that will make them come out. So basically do your best here to help the tank and you should be fine. So moving on from tanks, we now have healers and uh, this affix is quite painful. Coming in at plus seven, we have Grievous. So let's look at what Grievous does. Um, I've only just seen here, but I've actually been saying this affix name wrong the whole time. This is Grievous coming in at plus uh, Plus seven. That's my bad, guys. Grievous. While below 90% health, players are affected with Grievous Wound. So this can be quite a difficult one for healers. So you're going to want to help them as much as you can this week by avoiding all damage that you can. Obviously, if there is some damage that is uh, completely unavoidable, but just help them out where you can and use your cooldowns in a good spot. Use health stones. Use uh, healing pots everything you get, can to uh, to help healers this week I'm not a, uh, a full-time healer so it is difficult for me to comment on this one but what I would say is you're gonna need to top people very quickly and easily so if you have specific talents for this that that can make this possible that's great or I think it's quite easy for druids this week because they've got constant dots they they can heal it up quite easily but anything you can to top top these players above that 90% threshold is going to help a lot. If this does get to 5 stacks and you cannot heal this, it is kind of trying to play catch up the rest of the fight. So just try to keep on top of it and you should be fine. The last one that we have is Infested again. Let's quickly go through that. Infested. Some non-boss enemies have been infested with a spawn of Gahoon. Those mobs will heal all other trash mobs and bosses within 8 yards. So Sanguine can actually affect Infested this week. If spawns actually fall into the into the pools, then they will start to heal them up. So it's best to try and not drag the Infested into there. Just try to keep them out completely. You can get your DPS to burst them down as soon as possible. Fortified does affect uh, the spawns of Gahoon though, so they are going to have more health this week as well. 
So just be just be careful of them. Other than that, I would suggest the normal of CCing one or two infested, pulling the other trash, but be careful because it is fortified, killing the non-infested, and then killing the infested together so that you don't run the risk of, of uh, infesting other mobs. So from a comment on the last video, I thought I'd go over a couple of uh, the dungeons that are a lot easier this week. Well, a lot easier and harder. It, it shows all of them on here. So basically, this is bestkeystone.com. And I would take everything on here with a, a pinch of salt because a lot of it is also uh, down to yourself. Like you can go into that out and into a a towel and you'll still deplete if you don't play well. Whereas you could go into a shrine, play well, and um, actually complete it. So I'll head on over to here. So these are the these are the rankings for this week that this dungeon um, has come up with. And in general, I would I would agree with most of them. There's only a few packs on freehold that that might hurt if you don't deal with the um, the sanguine well, um, but places like Toldegor and Waycrest Manor that can be really annoying um, with the sanguine if you don't deal with it properly. Um, so as I said, take everything on this website with a bit uh, a pinch of salt. As we go down, it, it also shows you uh, what comps are pushing the highest at the moment. But this is only from what they've taken already. At the time I'm doing this, it's only been a few of the uh, the, the US servers probably been up for about eight nine hours. So as I said, this isn't the most accurate data at the moment. When you get later into the month, it uh, later into the week, sorry, it will be able to show more accurate information. So as you can see here, the the demon hunters are absolutely smashing at the moment. Uh, you've also got rogues doing very well. Uh, so going down to Oh, where's healers at? Ah, healers are here. So as, as as I said before, druids are very good for for uh, grievous. So yeah, head on over to here, guys, if you want to quick check that out. That's it from me today, guys. If you want to catch me live, I won't be doing as much on my DK this week. I'm probably going to be leveling some alts and uh, and trying out some different tank specs. So if you want to come see me do that, feel free to come do that live at twitch.tv forward slash nighthelmvg. If you're still struggling to find groups, then I would suggest to go over to the Mythic Plus Friends Discord. I will put the link in the description. Basically, this is a Discord that has nearly 20,000 members in it, all of different skill levels looking for groups and maybe in the same position as you. So it might be worth going and checking that out. Thank you all again. And if you can leave a like, uh, a comment or even subscribe, that would be great. I do appreciate that a lot. I also just want to say a big thanks to uh, to Reddit last week. I got a huge, huge amount of support from them. And I really do appreciate that, guys. So thank you. That's it from me, and I'll see you next time.